Outsourcing. Outsourcing is one of the most important parts of scaling a business. If you're the owner and you keep doing everything yourself, then you'll never have the time to do the things that only the business owner can do and should do. In this video, you'll learn how to outsource, why it's so important, tactics and examples that'll help you get a smoother experience when trying to find a freelancer. Also, where to find them. Let's grab an example. You decide it's time to create a website or a new website because it's outdated. You start doing your research, which platform to use, which theme to use. You realize you need a professional color palette. You start looking into how to assemble a good palette with matching colors and suddenly you realize you're spending countless hours per week doing the job of a web designer. Basically, you're trying to learn a skill that people take months to learn and you're applying it to the front face of your business. Okay, end of example. Now, how much money does that translate into for your company? If you're the owner, then your time is worth the most in the company. But obviously, if you pay yourself, you're not paying yourself the most because you're the one that's owning the company. You're, you have to take a cut so that you can build the business. And you're spending all that time on learning a skill that you'll use only once and that you likely won't even do a really good job because you're just not an expert in that field. That means you'll be wasting time because you're not putting efforts in the right places. You're spreading your focus thin by doing what you usually do in your business, plus learning a new skill that takes time to master. You'll end up with a half-assed website that doesn't include any marketing tactics, any methods of conversion. Maybe you want to be a designer, but in this example, the job we're trying to outsource is web design. So. Let's keep it at that. Think about it. If you're trying to learn how to build a website by learning web design, then what about copywriting? What about conversion optimization, SEO, graphic design, hosting, DNS servers? Are you gonna learn all that too? Most likely not. If your time is worth, let's say, a fictional amount of $30 per hour, it takes you four hours per day without the weekends, let's just cut off the weekends, for three months to learn how to use a website builder and get it looking okay. How much money is that? Three months times four weeks times five days, 60 hours of time, times $30, that's $1,800. But don't forget, you also had to take away some time from your regular activities to allocate to this new activity. So not only is it costing you $1,800, but also another $1,800 had to be removed from the regular time you spent on your business usually. That's a whopping $3,600 for your website, which I can guarantee won't even be strategically thought out as a designer would have. And all that is considering you even get to the end of building it, because most people will abandon as it gets more and more complicated the further you advance. Start realizing there's a lot more to it than just sticking colors and a few images on a page. So wouldn't it be better if you just paid someone that knows what he's doing and pay him maybe four or five K and get a solid website? By the way, I'm referring to this amount to a medium sized website, but a website can cost any variation of cost. You can't really put a price on a website. It depends on what you want in it and what you what field you're in and all that. So in the end, it can cost you almost the same thing, but you won't have to go through all the trouble of doing something yourself and you'll get something more professional as a result. Where to find freelancers? The only platforms I use are Fiverr and Upwork. You'll find what you need there. Upwork is more on a paid by hour basis and Fiverr is more on a gigs and offers basis. But you can ask any method on any platform, it just depends on the freelancer. How to easily communicate with any freelancer. It's important to know the basics of building a website, but I'm just taking website as an example, but any other marketing skills that you'll need to hire someone to do. That way you can easily communicate and understand when you're going back and forth, explaining what you want to the freelancer. Just watching a video or two will get you educated enough to at least talk to the guy or girl. And also you'll avoid getting ripped off. Another effective solution is to hire or contract a digital consultant so they can communicate in your place and advise you on what you really need and don't. This is probably the cheapest solution because in the end you'll pay the consultant an hour or two and you'll make sure you're getting what you want. When looking for a freelancer, ask your requirements and explain what you need from them. In your message, which you'll be sending to multiple candidates by the way, ask them to write a word Alpo or any other word, random word. It needs to be a word that people don't really use. This will show you which candidates really read and understood your request. If they can't understand adding a simple word in their response to you, then how will they understand the whole project requirements? The testing phase. Test out your final candidates and let them know you're testing them and others. Ask them to send you a detailed offer with prices and brief descriptions of each requirement you listed. When you get the offers, choose which ones make the most sense in terms of quality, pricing, and time of delivery. And don't forget communication. Communication is one of the most important things. That last part, the booby trap method should handle that. Thanks for making it through the whole video. If you've enjoyed your stay, drop a like and hit the subscribe button. You'll get notified next time I release a video in the series. And here's the entire digital marketing career path playlist. Take care and I'll see you soon.